A former Canadian government official is warning we may be on the verge of intergalactic war, saying, quote, the Bush administration has finally agreed to let the military build a forward base on the moon, which will put them in a better position to keep track of the comings and goings of visitors from space and to shoot at them if they so decide. I was introduced to the late Dr. Werner von Braun in the U.S., the father of rocketry. In my first meeting with him during that first three and a half hours, he said to me, Carol, you will stop the weaponization of space because there is a lie being told to everyone that the weaponization of space is now first being based upon the evil empire, the Russians. There are many enemies, he said, against whom we're going to build this space-based weapon system. The first of whom was the Russians, which was existing at that time. Then there would be terrorists, then there would be third world countries, now we call them rogue nations or nations of concern. Then there would be asteroids. And then he would repeat to me over and over, and the last card, the last card, the last card would be the extraterrestrial threat. Pardon me, I don't mean to interrupt you, but doesn't this make sense? I mean, if in fact there are extraterrestrials and they're buzzing uh, our planet, why wouldn't we want to take steps to defend ourselves from them should they turn hostile? As a military strategist, as a person who worked on the MX missile, which I did later, he said, you will find that there is going to be a spin to find some enemy against whom we have to build space-based weapons and now we should expect the spin because he said part of the formula for the intelligence community is if they might have a weapon then we have to consider that they do have these weapons so now they do have these weapons so now we have to build these weapon systems and that's the formula except that it's all based on a lie this is a report into future technology commissioned in 1968 by McDonnell Douglas, then one of the biggest aerospace and defense contractors in the world. What's extraordinary about this document is that it takes the existence of UFOs seriously. It recommends using UFOs and copying their design to make the next quantum leap in aerospace technology. Some UFOs may be extraterrestrial vehicles, they certainly have not been proven otherwise. The existence of extraterrestrial vehicles indicates vehicles could be built which would have capabilities quite useful to McDonnell Douglas Corporation. A supersonic saucer. Called the Silverbug, it was truly revolutionary. The plans show in detail a multi-jet engine craft that boasted amazing maneuverability and speed. It's an intriguing thought that this concept may tie in with the work of the German scientists who brought saucer technology to the U.S. at the close of the Second World War. I believe Silverbug could explain what Lonnie Zamora witnessed in the New Mexico desert in April 1964. His description of a silver disc-shaped object appears to fit in with the Silverbug profile was needed were certain cover stories. What do you do when people are spotting aircraft and then telling reporters that they've seen something very unusual flying out of an airbase in Nevada? And frankly, this was the origin of a lot of the sightings that took place in the mid-50s, 1954, 55, 56, of unidentified flying objects, uh, the UFOs. So the CIA was involved in encouraging people to believe that yes they saw UFOs and the CIA and the military tried to be very helpful to reporters to get these stories out to divert the attention of the country and particularly the people in this region about what they had actually seen. Mexican Air Force pilots capturing on videotape what are said to be 11, count them 11, UFOs. The Mexican Air Force has released a video that some of you are going to find difficult to believe. A journalist says it shows images of UFOs tracking a Mexican military plane. So what's the truth about UFOs? The story of successive attempts to develop radically new forms of flight, conducted under the strictest secrecy, is inextricably bound up with our relationship with UFOs over the last 60 years. Whether it's Allied pilots buzzed by strange balls of fire in 1942 or the Roswell incident five years later, 
there is a strong case to be made that secret military technology offers a convincing explanation for many UFO stories. For me, what is so striking about Roswell is that it's the first good example of an officially sanctioned UFO disinformation exercise. It showed the CIA that UFOs could provide perfect cover for their Cold War activities. It didn't take much for the CIA to spin the extraterrestrial story into the hearts and minds of the American public. And once it was there, all manner of experimental technology could, if it was spotted, be put down to the UFO phenomenon. But there are some cases that I just can't explain. The sightings of UFOs over Capitol Hill in 1952 are still baffling. What is certain is that real-world UFOs, the man-made ones, continue to develop. Recently, a series of sonic booms were heard exploding across California and Nevada. Something was in the sky that could be heard and felt, but not seen. Some informed observers, and I'm one of them, believe it was an aircraft traveling at several thousand miles per hour, a secret project known as Aurora. There is no trace of Aurora's physical existence, no evidence of government spending on its development or deployment. But there are tantalizing images that point to its existence. Pictures, for example, like this one. It shows a donut-shaped exhaust pattern, a sign perhaps that Aurora makes use of something called a pulse detonation wave engine. And it delivers a hell of a punch, easily enough power to drive an aircraft to six times the speed of sound. But perhaps the most intriguing are these images. This is a weather satellite image that shows a very interesting contrail originating out of Area 51 in Nevada and moving all the way across the United States, out over the Atlantic, on across Europe, and into Russia and China. Whatever it is, it's moving in excess of 8,000 miles an hour. If it is the contrail of a high-altitude hypersonic aircraft, in my book, it's the best evidence yet that Aurora is real. Anytime the government has secrets that can, they can keep from us, they can manipulate us by those secrets. In essence, they still remain 25 years at least ahead of us in technology, information, and knowledge, and secrets, and they are using them against us. I heard over the years, many times over, that the plan to usher in the new world order would be to make all the people in this country and around the world feel totally helpless to prevent the new world order from occurring, this world dominance plan, by saying that we had been invaded by aliens, so that we would say, oh please UN, come in and help us all. So bear in mind that there is a planned orchestration to get people to be submissive through the secret technology and information that they're keeping from you under the blanket of the so-called National Security Act that's threatening the security of our nation. You're being programmed since the, the second you're born in front of a television set, movies and everything else to get totally different. So you're, all you're doing is being programmed to stay in the physical dimension. I mean, the final conflict that these guys have to set up in motion, when we get through reducing the world's population, then they're going to have this organized group. I mean, the New World Order is a socialist dictatorship, just so you know. And what happens is that they're going to supposedly get the army to fight the common enemy from space, and that's the ETs. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's what the final conflict's going to be all about. I mean, you go right down by some of the movies that way. Wake up, guys. You're in a huge play. You know, it's like William Shakespeare said, the whole world's the stage and we're just the players on this thing, which is actually correct. Perhaps we need some outside universal threat. I occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world.